Hello all and welcome to Well Crochet yet again for another tutorial. My name is Mary and as you can see, yes, I have made a little Christmas garland. Cute, huh? <laughs> um, it, 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 you can, with Christmas garlands, you, you can make them um, as small as this one here is or as big as you want. You can make it to fit the whole house okay to go right around your lounge room or you can make a small one just on a little table that you've got your tiny little christmas tree on or you can make a wider one that goes all the way around your christmas tree here's the little loops here that you can hook up on hooks if you want to dangle from the ceiling there are so many things you can do with your christmas garland now i've only used two items in this tutorial the star and the triangle if you have a seven or eight year old who does already know how to crochet, these triangles are going to be great for them. They are basic, they are quick and easy. The stars may be a little bit difficult for them to do, but that's okay, you know, give them a try. If not, mum or dad or whoever's the carer at home, um, you do the stars for the little ones, they can do the triangles, and your very, very little ones can probably help you put these up. So it can be like a family project or it can just be something that you want to do as a gift to give to whoever you want to give to, okay? Or you just want to do it for yourself, whatever pleases you. <laughs> um, but the garland itself, it didn't take long. I would say that each item took me, I was quite fast at it, so it took me 10, 7 to 10 minutes for each one. I wove in the ends as well as I went along, okay? There are parts of it that I showed you where I wove in a few ends, so you can... Um, see how those ends go in what else can I tell you I use Bendigo Woolen Mills luxury yarn um, it's probably not the best yarn for um, these items because it's it's a luxury yarn okay it's a very soft yarn if you wanted it to be in the house that's okay if you are going to put this outside in the rain wind and storm and if you live in an area where there's snow um, this, this is this is going to get damaged, okay? Because it's, it's a 100% pure soft wool, and it's perfect for softness, okay? But it, it's probably not the toughest for weather. You want weather? You're probably better off using acrylic yarn, okay? But for the indoors, this is a lovely piece, okay? You can use anything in your stash. If you have cotton, you can use cotton as well. And I find that cotton is actually a lot more sturdier and stronger for garland use so um, yeah if you've got cotton use cotton as well what else can I tell you I used a four and a half hook okay um, there's not really much else I can tell you I do know that the actual um, pattern that I first found years ago which I've no idea where I found it did call for a small hook and thinner yarn so what it was doing was making a very thin garland for indoors okay but you can do this garland anywhere you want okay and you keep the hooked areas because these little hook things because you're going to use those to hang up so if you want your garland to hang in your lounge room or kitchen or wherever you want it to hang you can use your little hooks your little hook gadget thingies up the top there all right, so I'm not going to talk anymore because this is going on forever. <laughs> um, I'm just going to get started. So happy crocheting to you. Good luck. All right, we will be using the Bendigo Woolen Mills Luxury Gum Leaf. It is a lovely green. Uh, it's an eight ply. It is the luxury yarn, however. If you are going to make your garland to be outside in the weather, perhaps the, gum, the luxury is not really the brand for you. You may need to use an acrylic or a tougher yarn, but this is going to be a garland for indoors. So we'll use the luxury, okay? You can use the luxury outside if you like. It's just a very good yarn to have out in the, in the bad weather. We've got the white and we've got the um, green and we are going to get started, all right? You will need to have a size four millimeter hook for that. I'm using a four and a half because I want you to see my tight stitching, okay? You will need your scissors. And you'll need, yes, you will need your darning sewing weaving needle, whatever you want to call it. Okay, and we're going to get started. You'll need to know how to do chains, double crochet, and a slip stitch. And of course, you'll need to know how to do the starting stitch, which is the magic circle or magic ring or magic loop, whatever you want to call it. Now, it can be a tricky start to crochet. If you are new to crochet, this might be a little bit tricky for you. 
um, go and have a practice. I do have a tutorial here way back. <laughs> it goes almost back to my third or fourth um, tutorial that I did. Um, but, you know, I will leave the links in the um, information box down below. Okay, so if you want to go and have a practice and come back to us. If not, I'll try and do this part as slowly as I can, all right? And it's just this one part. After you pass this part, it's all good, okay? So your um, loose end comes in front. Your working end goes around, forming a little X or a cross or whatever you want to call that. Then you, let's pull that up so you can see, pop your hook under that thread, pull that loop up, hold it there, Hold everything in place, don't let go. Once you let go, it comes undone. All right, so hold it in place. Chain up three, and chaining is just a yarn over hook, pull through the loop. Still holding it, you need to hold that for a while. Yarn over hook, pull through the loop twice. Yarn over hook, pull through the loop a third time. So you now have three chains. You need to do a double crochet in that ring Oh, sorry, a double crochet is, oh, sorry, yarn over hook, pop it through the ring, yarn over hook, pull up a loop, yarn over hook, pull through two, yarn over hook, pull through the last two. You need to do one more, yarn over hook, pop it in the ring, yarn over hook, pull up a loop, yarn over hook, pull through two, yarn over hook, pull through the last two. Now what I want you to do with this little magic ring, you can let go of it now, it won't come undone, just give it a pull. That is why they call it a magic ring, because when you pull it together, it's all closed up. It's not exactly magic, it's just science, really. <laughs> science and maths tells you that's going to close up. All right, now, you have chain three and two double crochets. That is your first row. You have completed your first row, okay? So now what you're going to do is chain up three. One, two, and three, okay? Then you turn your work, like you're turning the page of a book. Um, if you want to turn the other way too, that's fine. Either way, as long as you're turning your work. All right. So now what you're going to do is put a double crochet in that very first stitch that you did. The one that you're turning chain, really. Okay, so yarn of a hook. Put it through your stitch, which is a V-looking thing. Yarn of a hook, pull up a loop. Yarn of a hook, pull through two. Yarn over hook, pull through the last two. Okay? All right. Now, you need to put a double crochet in that very next stitch. So, yarn over hook, put it in that stitch. Yarn over hook, pull up a loop. Yarn over hook, pull through two. Yarn over hook, pull through the last two. All right? So, now we've got the three chains left from below. What you've got to do is put in one double crochet in the top of that third chain. It's going to be really, really tight. Or well, mine is. I hope yours isn't. Okay. Yarn over hook, pull up the loop. Yarn over hook, pull through two. Yarn over hook, pull through the last two. And then you're going to put another one in exactly the same space. <laughs> if it's not as tight as mine. <laughs> Yarn over hook, pull up a loop. Yarn over hook, pull through two. Yarn over hook, pull through the last two. You now officially have two rows. You're starting like that, all right? So you're starting from the point and you're going to work up to the two points up the top, all right? Easy so far? If not, go back, have a bit more practice and come back to us, okay? This is where we're at. Uh, let's do our chain three. One, two, three. Turn your work like you're turning the page of a book. Okay? Yarn over hook. We're going to put a double crochet in that same stitch as our turning chain. So there's your one double crochet. Okay? And then you're going to put a double crochet in the next one, two, and three stitches. So you go double crochet in the first one. Double crochet in the second one. And double crochet, when I get my thread right, sorry, in that very third one right there. Not in the last stitch yet, just that third stitch there. Now, you've got all these chains left. 
you need to put two double crochets in the top of that chain so find the top of the chain I hope it's not as tight as mine <laughs> I'm hoping oh, there you go I got it in <laughs> all right there's one no I didn't yes I did one and another one goes in there as well and two all right so let me show you what you have so far you have that and see how it's forming that little V look it is forming your triangle and when you get to further into it it'll be like that all right so we are going to do get closer again whoops we're going to do another row of course and probably another row and another row how many have we done one two three two three four five six seven four five six seven yeah we need to do seven rows of this okay if you want and you've calculated how many rows you need you could color combo you could change put a, a red in here if you like and then a white and then your next row be red or green or whatever okay but we're just using one color for now just so I can show you the tutorial so we're chaining up three one two three and really all we're doing is that we are chaining up three we are turning we are putting a double crochet in that very same stitch okay this is the row you're going to repeat all the time there then you are going to put a double crochet in every stitch you see until you get to the end and where you see these three chains stop so you double crochet one before we did three i think and then two I think we'll do five from memory and then three because we're going up two every row I'm pretty sure that's what we're doing four yep that's what we're doing we're going up two every row because you're adding one at the beginning of a row and you're adding one at the end and five all right so now what you have is your last three chains remember those remember that tight stitch that we've got to get our our hook through we're going to put it two double crochets in there oh I did do two of yes I did good <laughs> we'll put two double crochets in there oh very tight okay let me make that first turning chain not so tight there we go we're in there's one and two. Oh, very tight even for that second stitch <laughs> all right and that's that now we chain three one two and three and then we turn all right so what i want you to do now whoops bring it out is how many rows have we done one two three four i need you to do three more rows exactly the same way as we've just done so your next row will be seven then you'll have nine and then you'll have uh, what is it eleven ten twelve i failed maths okay <laughs> but you know what i mean so you're gaining two in each row when you get to that last row which is the seventh row so one two three four so you just do three more rows um i'll meet you up all right we are at the end of our seventh row oops let me get that all in place there okay so we are oh, we move that out the way because that's making everything go dark so we're at the end of that seventh row we have done uh, the chain up three one double crochet in there um, nine or eleven across there I can't remember how many it was and now we're ready to put the two double crochets in the top of that last chain you know the very tight chain we're fighting to get through <laughs> there's one and there is two what I would like for you to do now we're going to cut this in a minute so there we're at the end we will pull the thread through we will cut it and we will just pull that through and it knots into place all right what I would like you to do um, before we continue on with um, our star I would like you to make one more of these so that you can see how we join from star to triangle star to triangle that way so I'll do star triangle star triangle that sort of thing all right so make one more of these and then we'll go on to the star which we'll be doing in two seconds 
Okay, now to do the star motif, you don't need to do a magic loop. All we need to do, because it's because it's made differently and it looks differently, it's a special kind of motif, you don't do magic ring or magic loop for that. What you do is your normal chain slip stitch, which is your normal knot. Okay, so all you're going to do is wrap your yarn around your finger twice, hold it there, pass the back loop halfway over your finger, hold it there, pass that next loop all the way over. So you formed a little slip knot and that's it. If you're not sure how to do that and you've missed all of that, I again have tutorials on how to do a slip knot as well. Um, here, those that link will be in the details below as well. All right, so let's get started. We need to chain five. So we do chain one, two, three, four, and five. All right. So we are going to slip stitch to join in that very first stitch. So put it through. Oops, don't split the yarn like I just did there. Put it through the V, slip it. Now hold it there in place and then pull that loop through. Don't worry about your little end there for now. Just leave it there. All right. Um, I can't remember how we, how many we need to chain up. Give me one second. I'll look at the pattern. Uh, three, four, five, six. And then one, two, three. four, five, six, six. I'm sorry. Sorry about that, guys. I had to look at the pattern. I haven't done this for a while, so I do apologize. So we're chaining up six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. That is the first part of your pattern. Then we put a double crochet in that circle. Okay, there's your one, double crochet, and then we are chaining three, one, two, three, and then we're putting another double crochet in the circle. Just be careful. Remember, you're putting it in the circle and not in there, okay? You're still in your circle. Chaining three again, one, two, three, putting another double crochet in that circle, how many do we need to do? One, two, three, four. Okay, we've done one, two, three. So we chain three again. One, two, and three. And we put another double crochet in that circle. Okay, then we chain three. One, two, and three. And then this is the tricky bit. This is the part where you've got to focus. We're going to slip stitch to join. And we slip stitch it into the one, two, third chain. All right, so let's get a close up so you can see what I'm doing here. You slip stitch it into not one, two, but in that, whoops, not one, two, but in the third chain right there. Oh, I hope your chains are not as tight as mine. Okay, so you slip stitched it through that chain right there. Pull it through like that, and officially, that's what you have. Okay, you have one, two, three, four, five stems. Okay? All right. Now, we chain up one, and we do a single crochet in that same stitch right there. All right? Then we do... All right, this is the uh, bit we need to focus on, people. We do a double crochet in that center. That's a normal double crochet. Oh, I'm not sure if I've been showing you how to do these stitches. I do apologize. Yarn over hook, pop it through that center. Yarn over hook, pull up a loop. Yarn over hook, pull through two. Whoops, two, without splitting the yarn. Yarn over hook, pull through the last two. All right. Then we do a double or a treble, sorry, that's your double crochet, my apologies. And a treble means you're putting your yarn over your hook twice before it goes into the center. So do that and do a normal pull through two, pull through another two, and then pull through the last two. Okay, now this is a tricky bit. You're gonna focus here. You're chaining three, one, two, and three, all right? 
And then you need to put a single crochet in that very first chain right there that you did. All right, looks like a V. Okay, pull the loop through. And then yarn of hook, pull through two. It's caused a little bobble right there. Okay, then you do a treble again. One, two, so yarns over the hook twice. And we pop it in the same space. Two, two, and two. All right, this is what we have so far. Yarn over hook. We're going to do a normal double crochet in there, which we're doing. Pull my thread. Okay. And now we're going to do a single crochet in there as well. Okay, that's what you should have so far. Okay, then you will do, you will skip that stitch and you will do a single crochet in the next space that you come to. All right, then you will do your double crochet. So now you're going to do exactly the same thing in this next space. And you will do your treble. You end up hooked twice. One in there as well. All right. And then you'll chain your three. One, two, three. And you'll do that single crochet in that very first chain that you did right there. It's forming a picket edge well it's not exactly no i've done that wrong i just did a slip stitch no 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 see how easy that is to make a mistake <laughs> you've got to do your single crochet in there pull up the loop leave it there and pull through two okay then you do your treble again in the same stitch pull through two pull through two pull through the last two then you'll do your double in the same stitch and then you'll do your single in the same stitch. So you're repeating that in every space that you do. Okay, we'll do this next one together and then you can do the last two on your own. So single crochet in the next space, double crochet in the same space. Whoops, double crochet in the same space. Treble crochet. In that space, two, 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 chain three, one, two, three, single crochet in that first chain that you did, treble in the same space, double in the same space. and single in the same space okay so what I want you to do continue do the same in that next chain space and do the same in that chain space and you should have one two three four five points okay and I'll meet you up all right so we've got to the end of that row there and that was our last single crochet that we did right there. Now, see that single crochet there? Let me get a nice close up here for you. See that single crochet right there? We are going to slip stitch into that single crochet. That's the very first one that we did. We're just going to slip stitch through there and into there. I know this row was a very fiddly row, but that's a slip stitch. And now we're just going to pull a loop through. The best part about this row being a very fiddly row is it was only our it was our second and our only row we need to do for our star. Okay, so there's your your star. We've got some ends to weave in there. That's no big deal. Which I'll show you how to do those now, just quickly with these ends. All right. Now um, with the green one, I've um, already woven in some ends, but I'm going to go off air in a second and make another two more. One green one and one extra star and then we're going to come back and we are going to 
weave in the, the ends of the green one and uh, then we will put it all together so for this particular end this is the first end that we started with you can weave it in any way you like in the round as long as you can't see it in the front okay weave it in any way you like but you must weave it in don't think just because you've joined it that it's going to stay in place no 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 you must weave in okay in the round all the way around and then what you do when you get to a certain area of your woven in section you will let's have a look at that one looked like it almost went through the wrong way there I'll just check there we go you will go back the other way because you want it to stay in place this is this oh it's going to come undone this thread you, this is going to be used as a garland so if you're going to use it outside the weather will rip that to shreds all right your wind your rain your storm if you're living in an area where it's winter during Christmas it's going to be a mess <laughs> so you want to make sure that's woven in properly and I think that's done now okay that's the end there all right now we will weave in that very last end that we had right there then I'm going to go away and do my pieces, my two other pieces, the second triangle and the second star. And when we come back, um, I will weave in that second star, I'm sorry, the second triangle with you so you can see how that's woven in. And then always weave in through the back, okay? And then from there, we will show you how to do the actual garland part, how to put them all together, okay? Now, with this, you can weave in any way you like. I'm just going to go through there once. And then I'm going to go through, back through there and go through this piece right here. You can do it any way you like. But again, you want it to be strong. So I've gone through there. Make sure you can't see it on the front, okay, which you can't. And I'll go back one more, just through other areas. And we're done. And that's done now you're probably thinking my stars are a little bit curled up at the moment yes that's true and that's what happens when you first do them what you need to do is give it a tug maybe wash it and block it well, washing and blocking is another tutorial I need to do for you guys but washing and blocking as you wash it you pin it down on all ends walk away let it dry it might take a couple of days come back take the pins off and it'll be as flat this is not so flat because we've just done it now and yet it's still not too bad all right so go off air do one more of these and one more of these and then we'll come back and we'll put it together with the garland catch you soon all right here we are with our four pieces our two stars and our two uh, triangles we I just wanted to show you quickly the how to weave in this particular end on both sides of our triangle I don't think I showed you that before so I'm going to quickly show you how to do it because I'm pretty sure I wove those in um, off air so I'll just show you one here mm, this yarn is frayed because I've been playing with it <laughs> all right so you have your triangle it doesn't really matter which way you pop it in but I think on the last row because the neat side is this way I would weave it in through that bubbly side there <clears throat> okay so what we'll do is firstly we'll get close because we're a little bit far away all right so again make sure everything is correct before you start weaving in ends because this one here you're not going to get undone okay so we are going to pop it through the back of the top of the stitch there so right through the back of it split the stitch a little I know it's a big no-no in crochet I'm aware of that <laughs> but this is the only way to keep this thing in place so you've split it then you are going to go down that stitch and into the bottom of it so we go right down the stitch just through the sides of all that we are still splitting our yarn until we get down to the bottom 
don't put so tight don't pull so tight and now that we're down the bottom there <clears throat> see that row of double crochets we are going to weave it in and out of that row and that will not come undone okay that's the first section don't pull too tight because it'll come down and we don't want it to come down so we're going to weave back the other way putting it in a different section otherwise it'll unravel won't it we don't want that to happen either just check your front and make sure nothing stick well that's sticking out so that's going to be noticeable all right that's why you should always check your front okay let's see if that worked beautiful all right so pull that through right there and that will do okay that's not going to come yet come out if you put it through twice you put if you want to put it through a third time by all means you can do that too now the bottom bit don't let anyone tell you that once you've done that magic circle that's not going to come undone well it can so you must weave that in and out a few times as well Okay, don't forget lovely people that um, to visit my Etsy and my madeit.com.au stores. Those links will be in the details below. Um, yeah, to so visit the store, check it out. If you find that you, you like to crochet, you like crochet but you don't like to do it, I have plenty of items there for sale as well. Okay, so um, in the meantime, you know, YouTube is free, as you know. <laughs> well, it's not exactly free. You're still using your internet but you're just not using it a lot. All right, so you find a little spot somewhere under here anywhere you want to weave that end in anywhere you want remember you must weave it in because that will come out go back a different way so that you're not unraveling and go back another way it doesn't matter how you weave that bottom one in but as long as you do it three times at least all right so what we've done is we now officially have whoops blow that out again whoops that didn't work tried out oh, it's better we have two triangles and two stars okay we want to make them look pretty so we will do it like so whoops <laughs> so okay now in between each of these items there will be a chain of 10 or 15 you put in what you like I'm only going to put in 10 for the tutorial so you can see but you can put 15 10 20 as many chains as you like in between we are going to use the green to start okay let's push all these out of way we'll start with the first triangle so first thing we're going to do we actually don't need the triangle yet we are going to just make a slip knot so we can put our hook on easy slip knot you saw me do before with the the white okay let's blow that up move it out the way and we're going to chain on uh, let's see we'll chain up 40 we'll make a 20 one two three four five six seven eight nine ten all right now we'll leave it at ten initially you would have to do about 20 or even 30 whatever slip stitch to join <clears throat> excuse me this cold will be gone soon I promise guys and then hopefully I'll have a normal voice again okay so you chain one and then you single crochet in the center of that and you can crochet over your end okay single crochet one two and three all right we did 10 chains to begin with I want you to put in 20 single crochets all together and I will meet you up okay so we've done 19 we're going to do our 20th and we're still crocheting over that thread it'll make it a lot easier later okay and now we just slip stitch to the very first single crochet that we did so slip stitch in there whoops I won't pull it out like that <laughs> slip stitch in there like that done pull it through and then what you've got initially 
is a circle that you're going to use. Say if you want to hang up your um, garland and you've got a hook there, all you do is slip your hook in there and that's how it's going to hold, all right? Or a needle or a pin or a nail, whatever you use on your wall, you just can put your little thread through. If you don't want to do it that way and you want to hammer a few nails in, then you can do a few nails in there as well, okay? But usually it's usually hooked on a hook. That's what that round circle's for. All right, now what we're going to do, we're going to chain, oh, just give it a tug. We're going to chain 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Actually, I might make it 15. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Now, what will happen is ordinarily you would chain, I don't know, 20, 30, 40. Depends on how long you want your garland to be. So if you're going to hook it there and you want your first triangle to be that short, that's fine. If you want your triangle to be, let's do that, far away from that hook part, then just keep chaining. Okay. So really there's no right or wrong way of doing this particular part. All right. This is just a way of showing you on YouTube so you can see the stitches. All right, so you've changed your, you change your 10 or your 15 or your 220 or whatever you want to chain, okay? What you need to do is slip stitch. Oh, that's not very close, is it? That's better. Slip stitch at the top of the chain on that first triangle there. The chain first, not the stitch here, just the chain. So you've slip stitched in there like that. Then you chain one. And you single crochet in the same, oops, in the same space as that one. Then you single crochet in that very first stitch. They're very close and it might be quite tight, but that's fine. And then you sit single crochet in each stitch across. So this part here, very basic. Okay. So when we get to the star, you need to focus on how you're going to join that that piece all right <clears throat> the voice will come back i promise guys <laughs> it's been a few weeks um and you know, luckily i have been really busy this past few weeks and had some issues to deal with that i haven't been able to do tutorials so you haven't heard the worst part of the voice okay so it's actually only just starting to come back to what i would call normal human voice before i sounded like a cross between a dog and a foghorn but that's neither here nor there okay Okay, now you single crochet in the top of that last stitch right there, okay? So basically what you have so far is that, okay? Right now it means absolutely nothing until you join your star. And it doesn't matter which way this goes, really it doesn't. You put it the way you want. Okay, so now we are going to chain, because we did 15 here, I don't know, I'll do 10 actually. We'll do 10 chains in between each um garlic so it's one two three oops it's a bit loose sorry four five six seven eight nine ten i stopped to tighten it it's still quite loose it doesn't matter so ten better make it fifteen sorry guys one two three four five it gives it a, a better separation okay so 15 you could do 20 you could do 30 you could do whatever you like okay now you pick up your um, star and you can put it in any part of the star that you want. I'll put it where there's no ends that I've woven in. And I know where that is because I can feel how thick it'll be. So I'll put, there's the ends that are woven in there. You can't see it, but you can feel it. So I'll just put it in the total opposite there. Okay. So what it does is that end weighs that down a bit. So this is quite a thin um, item. So it, it'll just flick about all the all the time but if you've got a bit of end there it gives it a bit of weight okay so what you do see that chain space that we had when we were doing our chain three before we are going to put our hook in and slip stitch into the top of that chain then we're going to chain one and we're going to put a single crochet in the same space it'll actually just lock it all into place okay this will flick around in the wind it's supposed to. That's what garlands do. It moves around in the wind. Okay, I don't know if it'll tangle it. I hope not. If you leave these chains in here too long, 
you'll find that they'll just spin, spin, spin and tangle up. So I think a shorter chain, shorter chain, a shorter chain of 10 or 15 chains is plenty. So let's do 15 again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and fifteen. All right, so now we've done our triangle, we've done our star, we're going to add our next triangle. Remember to add the triangle on the space where the neater edge is I guess it doesn't really matter if it blows around in the wind it's going to turn around anyway so it doesn't really matter but it just looks better when you're doing it okay there's no right or wrong way of this part I keep saying that so we're going to slip stitch in there first then we we'll chain one and single crochet in that very same stitch right there I'm sorry I should actually bring that in for you and then we single crochet in the next stitch, which is quite tight and very close. It looks like there's none there, but you really have to get into that one. Otherwise, you have like a hole or a gap. And then I want you to single crochet all the way across until you get to your next star. So what I want you to do, as we've done from there to there, just do from there to there to the star, to the star when you get to the end of the star stop there and we'll finish off all right what you should have is that so far all right um once i did the star i actually just <clears throat> excuse me chained 15 stitches across i can't for the life of me remember if we did 15 or 20 i think we've done 15 we did do 15 okay done 15 across now remember what we did in the beginning when we, let's pretend that we've done all our um, garland and we've got 220 of these little things attached, all right? And you want to finish off doing that circle, okay? What you need to do, we've chained our 15, you need to chain, it might help if you had a stitch marker, you could leave it there. I just leave my finger there and you need to chain 10. So one, two, three, four, five six seven eight nine and ten then you need to put a single crochet in that very first stitch that you did i'm sorry a slip stitch sorry slip stitch in the very first stitch that you did so slip stitch chain one then you are going to do what you did in that first part. You're going to put single crochet in the round bit fiddly, that first one, and then, oh, sorry, one, two, three, we'll do all this one together, four, so single crochet in the round, five, Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We need to do 20 of them, if you remember correctly, from that previous one. I don't know if it's 11 or 10 there. It doesn't matter. 12, 13. doesn't matter if it's one less. 14, 15. 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. Then what you do, once you've done your 20, you just slip stitch to the top to join, chain one, give it a snip right there. And you have now officially done your garland. <laughs> You're not even in picture, Mary. Hello. Wake up, Mary. <laughs> okay. So you've officially done your garland. This is what it looks like. You've got your little loop that you hook up on a hook there. And your garden, garden, your garland dangles, your garland dangles there. And then that hook hooks up there. 
okay if you want to make these in between a little bit wider by all means go ahead if you want to add something else in there like i know um lots of people who put circles who've made little circles i know lots of people have made little baubles or or bells or whatever you want to call them and they've put them up and they've hung them up in their lounge room like that or they've taught their seven or eight year old how to crochet or five in my case how to crochet um and they've the young ones have made their parents a garland and it keeps your children busy just before that christmas time before the big fella arrives to give them their little gifts <laughs> so if you like this tutorial please give it a thumbs up don't forget to click like and um, subscribe to the YouTube channel and click that little bell button so you can receive further tutorials. Thanks so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial because I love making these sort of things and, and being the fact that it's Christmas time, the kids will love it. All right. If you want, you could also use a red across the top, which gives it more of a Christmas theme. Um, don't forget to weave in these ends and with this one, you just need to weave in and out once and then twice, and then chop. Same with the other one. Happy crocheting to you. Ciao for now.